Hmm. When you only have one left in the bag, do you have an M&M? &M, or do you just have an M? Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, uh, yes, I have uh, managed to take a couple of uh, unexpected little uh, thrift store crawls uh, before the end of the year closed out. Um, yeah, I, I did one on my birthday, which that's kind of become a tradition, so that wasn't quite so unexpected. But uh, yeah, just uh, yesterday, as I, as it is that I when I record this video, yesterday was the day after Christmas, and we had to run into town to run some errands, and I was man was able to sneak in some time for a little mini St. Vinny's thrift store crawl. I hit three of the stores, came out with a few cool things, which I thought I would show you in this haul video. Uh, before I do that, though, I thought I would show you the few things that I got for Christmas. Uh, we kind of did Christmas a little bit like this year. Uh, it, it seems to be the way that we do it is two or three years we do it fairly light, mostly just stocking stuffers, and then there, then comes a year where we just go all out and kind of go crazy and buy each other a bunch of stuff. So, uh, yes, this was one of the leaner years. Uh, kind of justified for reasons I won't go into. But, uh, yeah, uh, my friend Mark down in San Diego, he and I always, uh, we've done this for probably six or seven years now. Uh, oh, no, more than that, I think. Uh, we have access to each other's Amazon wish lists, and we each get our, uh, we get each other something off of the other's wish list. And he actually got me two things this year, uh, both of them CDs. Big surprise, I know. Uh, but, yes, he got me two CDs that complete my Spider-Man soundtrack collection. I've got... Uh, the soundtrack from Spider, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 by uh, Hans Zimmer and the Magnificent Six. I'm not sure who they are. Featuring Pharrell, Pharrell Williams and Johnny Marr. Also, we've got Alicia Keys and Kendrick Lamar on here. So, uh, yeah. Lots of... Uh, this is one of the various artist ones, obviously. As well as the various artist song-based soundtrack from Spider-Man 2. So, yes, now I have all of the soundtrack releases from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, as well as the the uh, Andrew Garfield, uh, to the two Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. Don't have anything from the uh, the Tom Holland uh, trilogy, at least not yet. Uh, I, I've, I've got come to like uh, the composer, Michael Giacchino. Uh, his stuff is really good. He, he did the three Star Trek reboot movies and a few other things. Anyway, one of these days, maybe I'll get those. They seem to be a little pricey, actually. And, uh, and then we have... Oh, I got a little something for myself for uh, Christmas. Uh, Varez Sarabond, which is a soundtrack label I've talked about a couple times before. Uh, they announce a couple of their, their final releases, usually two releases, they announce in early December. And there was one of them I really wanted, so I decided to kind of gift that to myself for Christmas. It is the uh, Deluxe Expanded Edition soundtrack from the movie Pleasantville. Uh, it's a movie from 1998. If you have not seen it, it's really it's an amazing movie. I recommend it highly. Tobey Maguire and shoot, what was her name? Uh, Reese Witherspoon uh, starred in it, as well as um, Jeff Daniels and William H Macy. So excellent movie uh, with a great social theme. Yeah, the movie was made 25 years ago, and its message message seems more relevant now than ever. So uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, not to get into stuff like that, but yes, excellent score by Randy Newman, uh, one of his uh, actual uh, instrumental scores. He Obviously, he's, he's done songs for a lot of movies uh, and has had his own career as a singer-songwriter, but he has also done film scores, and that was one of them. So yeah, good. Oh, and then there's, there's Noah. I can't forget Noah in my Christmas gifts. Uh, well, this Star Wars Miko LP that you see behind me here, uh, it wasn't officially or actually a birthday present, but the timing ended up being right around my birthday. So I consider that a birthday present. He gifted it to me. I, I was going to buy it off of his Discog store, but uh, he said, no, it's yours. Forget about it. So he's great. And uh, to show you how great he is uh, even more, a couple of things he got me for uh, Christmas in the box. It actually arrived uh, just after Christmas. It arrived yesterday, but I uh, I consider that no problem at all. 
I'm not hung up on getting things before the date of Christmas. Uh, if I get it afterwards, it just extends Christmas a little bit longer. What's wrong with that, right? Anyway, uh, I got the uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, 45th Anniversary Blu-ray. Uh, I mentioned to him a while ago, actually, I think he saw it in a video, and uh, I, I heard about it. Or we might have talked about it before then, I don't know. But anyway, I've got the soundtrack album from Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I have not seen this movie in decades, and so he decided uh, it's time for me to uh, maybe rectify that injustice, and uh, he must have known, uh, you know, subliminally or, or without me telling him that, you know, uh, we have streaming services, and obviously I can order, call something up, assuming it's on streaming services, whenever I want to, but uh, it will persuade me more to actually watch it if I have the actual physical disc on hand, and especially if it is sent as a gift. So uh, yes, uh, per maybe this weekend I will feel like watching Rocky Horror Picture Show once again for the first time in a million years. And he also sent me a book. Yeah, he didn't send me any CDs, which is... there's nothing wrong with that. We, we always send each other CDs, so it's kind of cool to have a little change of pace uh, in terms of the gifts we, we send each other. Uh, he sent me a book. I am not much of a reader, but I, I, I need to make a concerted effort to read this book. Uh, and it's something that uh, is of interest to me. Uh, the artist, uh, a music artist named Andrew McMahon. Uh, he was uh, he started out with uh, Something Corporate and then Jack's Mannequin were his two bands that he was in uh, previously. And now he is a solo artist. Uh, this is his memoir, Three Pianos. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, I know that he's been through quite a few uh, trials and tribulations over his life. Uh, his relatively young life, and uh, I've always kind of been curious, uh, you know, as to, you know, the details. And so Noah decided to get me this this book, a fantastic gift. I definitely look forward to reading it. And I, yes, as I said, I will make a considered concerted effort to actually read this book. I don't know why I'm not a reader. My mother is a voracious reader. So was my sister. So, uh, I, I just, I guess I just didn't get the gene, the reading gene. So, uh, Maybe one of these days, maybe by the time I've retired, maybe I'll actually start reading more. But uh, yeah, wonderful uh, book here uh, that I will definitely look forward to reading. And uh, yes, uh, spoiler alert, but uh, you may see Andrew McMahon in my uh, year-end video coming up soon. So uh, yes, wonderful gifts uh, all around, fantastic gifts. And then so now I will go ahead and get into the actual haul from the three St. Vinny stores. Uh, yes, only a couple of dozen CDs. Uh, yeah. for me that's for me that's going light. As uh, is only a couple of dozen, uh, unless you count the thirty CDs that are in this little package here. This is uh, yeah, I found this still sealed uh, CDRs with printable surface surfaces on them. Um, as I've mentioned before, I've kind of got a little side hustle. It's not a very active side side hustle, but uh, anybody who wants to copy a uh, an LP or a cassette onto CD. I actually haven't done any cassettes for anybody yet. I've only done records. Uh, I like to go all fancy with the inserts. I uh, scan the, or find online if I can, the original uh, album cover and make the front insert that album cover. And I kind of try to approximate the back insert uh, in a way. And also I have a printer, an inkjet printer that can print onto printable CDs, the CDs with the uh, uh, pre-affixed label surfaces. Uh, it's got a little uh, port on the front of it and a uh, tray. I should have grabbed the tray and showed it to you on camera, but it's a little tray that the CD snaps into and feeds into the, the printer and it, the inkjet prints right onto the CD. It's really cool. So you can have full color labels and they are factory affixed to the discs so they won't uh, peel off. So yeah. I like to go really fancy with the CDs that I make anyway. So yes, just $2.99 for a package of 30 uh, blank CDs. So yeah, always on the lookout for those. So yes, anyway, on with, finally, on with the actual haul from the St. Vinny stores. Well, I guess that was part of it. Uh, and what, what else would I buy on December 26th but Christmas CDs? <laughs> Why not? Uh, they're, they're not actually on sale at the thrift stores. I mean, when something's a dollar, a dollar a pop, you know, you can't complain. But yeah, go ahead and get a couple things. Um, the Carpenter's Christmas Portrait. Uh, this one was actually at both House of Records and Epic Seconds. And I thought 
seriously about picking it up at either at both of those stores, but I didn't, and obviously there was a reason why. It was at uh, St. Vinny's for a dollar. And then this one, this one is from the Narada label, a New Age label that I was fond of back in the uh, my New Age phase, back in the late 80s, early 90s. It's called Solstice, and it is by uh, two pianists, David Lons and Michael Jones. Um, excellent little, uh, you know, acoustic piano performances of uh, Christmas carols and holiday songs. So, very good stuff. Then I had to pick up... Oh, rearrange stuff here. Pick up the... the trilogy of Mannheim Steamrollers Christmas albums. Uh, this is a Mannheim Steamroller Christmas. Then we have A Fresh Air Christmas. And we have Christmas in the Air. So yes, I decided to get all three of those. I kind of been been uh, had in mind to pick those up for quite a while now. I know I, I have them on cassette, but you know, I like to have them on CD. And then the last holiday CD I picked up was uh, one that I thought was was worth a listen uh, come next November. Christmas with the Rat Pack. Yes, we've got uh, Dean Martin, uh, Frank Sinatra, and Sammy Davis Jr. doing uh, Christmas carols. I thought this was a pretty cool compilation. Yeah, 21 songs on here, uh, rotating through, uh, rotating between each of those uh, three vocalists. So, yeah, I thought that would be pretty cool to listen to. Uh, then I got a couple of soundtracks. Uh, this one, well, this one is actually not the original soundtrack. This is a re-recording, but uh, Psycho, Bernard, Bernard Herman's or Bernard Herman's original score, uh, re-recorded by Joel McNeely and the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. It is also on the Varese Saraban label. So, uh, whenever I see Varese Saraban CDs uh, at the thrift stores, and you can tell them by the uh, the burgundy or maroon uh, header up here with a logo and then the uh, text in white there. I always have to look to see what it is. Uh, sometimes I buy them, sometimes I don't. Uh, the, the next one here, <laughs> this was more more out of morbid curiosity than anything else. Around the world with the chipmunks. Yes. Uh, this being the, I don't know, was it recorded? In, well, actually, the copyright date says 1981, or does it say 61? I'm not sure. It's in very, very small print. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure what date it was, but uh, if it was 1961, I am definitely expecting some uh, uh, stereotypes uh, written into the lyrics and uh, melodies and stuff. So it's going to be an interesting hmm, uh, sociological study on uh, what we thought was acceptable back then in the 60s. So it could be either interesting, could be cringy too. I'm f fully expecting cringe. So it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting to listen to. Then I found a couple of Tina Turner CDs. Had to get uh, Private Dancer. This is the um, remastered version with bonus tracks. I have the original album on LP, but I thought, you know, it's got bonus tracks on it, so I might as well pick it up. As well as, as, well as her album, Wildest Dreams. Uh, this one has her cover of Missing You, the Tom Waits song. And uh, also Golden Eye, the James Bond theme. And a couple of other things on here. So, yeah. And I've never owned that uh, album before, so I thought I'd pick it up. Then, uh, this one I thought was uh, pretty interesting. It's a band called Yum Yum. This was their one and only album, and I looked at the review on uh, allmusic.com, and it was not complimentary, <laughs> which had me even more curious. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. And yes, the album was called Dan Loves Patty. Not sure who Dan or Patty are, but... Uh, so yeah, that'll be very interesting to listen to, see if it's as uh, bad as the uh, review made it out to be. Then I got a Barbara Streisand live album, a uh, live concert at the Forum. Um, this one has a, a medley at the beginning of Sing and Make Your Own Kind of Music. Make Your Own Kind of Music is my favorite Cass Elliot song. Uh, one of my favorite songs from the 60s, and of course, if I, I've got a, if I have the chance to hear somebody else covering it, I had to do that, so, uh, and yeah, it's got, uh, On a Clear Day You Can See Forever, and, uh, Sing and Happy Days Are Here Again. Oh, I guess she covers the song Sing. Uh, she, she medleys it twice with those two songs, and then she closes out with her classic song, People. Should be a fun one to listen to. Then I've got a CD by Jim Brickman, the, uh, New Age pianist. Uh, this one has a number of duets on it. I've had the CD before. I 
got rid of it for one reason. I think it was because it was scratched up. Uh, this one has Carly Simon, uh, Michael W. Smith, for those of you who are Christian music fans, um, Jordan Hill and Billy Porter, guest star on here. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting listen. And then I've been collecting... Uh, there's one guy who must have donated all of his Chet Atkins CDs to the thrift stores because the last couple of times I've been to thrift stores, I found one at each of the thrift stores. Uh, this one's called Sweet Dreams, or Street Dreams, excuse me. And I didn't realize it at the time. I picked it up just because, you know, as soon as I saw it, I picked it up. And because I had, I've gotten a few Chet Atkins CDs recently. But this one actually has Classical Gas, the Mason Williams composition on it, which is icing on the cake for me. I, I love that song, so uh, give, give that one a listen. And then we have Reba McIntyre with her debut album. Oh, no, no, it's not her debut album, but it is self-titled. It's just called Reba. Th yeah, this was like her 12th or 14th album, I think. So, uh, yeah, give this one a try. Reba's albums, especially her older albums, have been hit or miss with me. Uh, so, yeah, I'll have to see if that, if that one sticks. And then we have Frank Sinatra with his album Old Blue Eyes is Back. And the reason I picked this one up, uh, I'm not necessarily a huge Sinatra, Sinatra fan, which uh, will not seem like the truth when you see what's at the end of my haul here in a minute. But uh, I got this one mainly because, a very strange reason, because there's an album called Old Yellow Eyes is Back that uh, Brent Spiner put out, data from Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, he is he was a, uh, or is a singer, an excellent singer, by the way. And of course, to uh, as a kind of a tribute to Frank Sinatra, uh, his album Old Blue Eyes is Back, he had to tie in his character of Data to the title Old Yellow Eyes is Back, because the character of Data had yellow eyes. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the main reason I bought this, is just because of the tie-in tie -in with, the, the rather unlikely tie-in with Star Trek. So, whatever. Anyway. Uh, then I got um, a CD by a pianist, I think, uh, named Tom Grant, a smooth jazz... Oh, yeah, pianist, because there's a picture of the pian piano on the cover. Uh, this guy was born and raised in the Portland area of Oregon, so he is a, a local or regional artist. And this one was put out on the Verve Forecast label, so I'll be curious to hear that. And Tom Grant is another one that I've, I've heard a couple of albums by. They didn't stick, but maybe this one will. Then we've got a couple of artists here who you have definitely heard of. Diana Ross, uh, The Definitive Collection, a 20-song uh, collection of her solo stuff. Uh, this one was still sealed. So yeah, still sealed for $1.99 actually at St. Vinny's. So yes, had to pick it up. And I think this is one that I may have owned before and for some stupid reason I got rid of. Uh, then we have an artist that uh, you may have heard of, Marvin Gaye. What's going on? Yes, this was at St. Vinny's for 99 cents. And I've never listened to the album before. I know, I know, shame on me. I, I, of course I know the title track, obviously. But yeah, i just never taken the time to listen to the entire album all the way through. And uh, it's got a little bit of water damage on the back insert. You can see the wrinkles. But uh, yeah, the disc is almost completely spotless. So uh, yeah, and this is the... Uh, Remastered, remastered edition with bonus tracks. So, and uh, but that's not the best deal I got. Also for ninety nine cents, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, the complete duets, a two disc set of all three of their albums. You can see the track listing here. All three of their albums, as well as a bunch of B sides and uh, bonus tracks on it. So yeah, and again the discs are like completely spotless. Ninety nine cents for this. So yes, it was a good day at the uh, St. Vinny's thrift stores. And just goes to show you, you, you can go there once a month and find a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, and, uh, oh, but the final thing in my haul, I mentioned a minute ago that I was, I'm supposedly not a huge Sinatra fan. This stuff is falling out of the thing, sorry. Whoop. Everything is collapsing on me, excuse me. Uh, but uh, when I saw this, I had to pick it up. I couldn't resist. Uh, it's a nice little book, uh, canvas-bound book thing. Frank Sinatra, the limited edition box set of the, his Duets and Duets 2 albums. And you can see it, it's kind of dirty. I'm going to clean it up, and these uh, pictures are coming off here. But I think I'm going to just uh, 
I'm going to measure these two, print out uh, on the color laser printer. I'll, I'll use that, the color laser printer at work. Don't tell anyone. Uh, and reprint the album covers and uh, maybe carefully peel these off and just put the new ones on there to kind of restore this. But uh, yeah, it's a very cool set. You open it up like this. And the two discs, the two CDs are in this fold-out pocket here. And yeah, the two discs right there. And it's got, uh, not only does it have the track listings on the backs of the CDs, of course, but it's got the track listings on the insides of the book. And that's not all. There's also a third CD in here, the radio the radio special. It's a, a little over an hour long. I guess they made a radio special to promote this box set or to promote the duets albums. But uh, yeah, three CDs. One of them is a special limited edition promo for just $6.99. So yeah, and I was not afraid to pay $6.99 for that. So that was a fine uh, capper on the great haul that I had from the St. Vinny stores for December of 2023. So yes, talk about a great way to cap off 2023, the old year, with a nice CD haul. I'm going to try to uh, spend the month of January not buying any CDs. Don't know how that's going to go. Uh, you know what happened when I tried last February, although I'm hopefully I won't have a uh, gallbladder attack this time. But anyway, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to see if I can uh, go an entire month without buying CDs because I really need to kind of uh, trim down this backlog of listening that I've got. And uh, yeah, I, I really want to try and uh, do that. And I'm going to work toward that goal with my monthly, it might be even be more than monthly, playlist videos. Uh, those have been gone for a year or two. I'll bring those back to uh, you know try and listen to a certain amount of stuff every month to cut down this backlog I've got. CD backlog, vinyl backlog, cassette backlog, you name it. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.